This newborn baby has a pig's tail on his buttocks. The boy's father ruthlessly cut off the tail with a knife and named him Balatoni. Balatoni was sent by his mother to train as a child for the king of appetite. Liquid-like slop filled the pig trough, but instead of pigs, there were many people sitting at the trough. They all had their heads down with spoons and then mechanically fed into their mouths. Perhaps it was the pig's tail from birth that gave him the gift of blood. Balatoni won his first contest for the big gullet. He thus became a key target of his coach's training. At that time, it became a national sport. Balatoni, who had a talent for eating, became a better eater under his coach's training. He became a candidate for the championship of this year's competition. Now it's the first half of the King of Appetite competition. The contestants on the stage are all very big and strong. They are shoving food into their mouths with their spoons. Because they are eating liquid food, the scene was a bit unbearable to watch. When Balatoni was competing, he couldn't help but glance at the audience. There was a fat and beautiful woman sitting there. She is Annie, the winner of the Women's Appetite Championship. She is also Balatoni's longtime crush. Balatoni heard Annie cheering for him, so he decided to win the championship with all his energy and use this honorable status to pursue Annie. But the other contestants on the stage were also very powerful, even though Balatoni ate like crazy with all his strength. But in the end, he only got second place. During the intermission, all the contestants were throwing up backstage. They had to empty their stomachs to prepare for the second half of the race. The coach noticed Balatoni was distracted during the race and reprimanded him severely. He told Balatoni to eat well and stop thinking about women. The second half of the game was significantly more difficult. This time, they had to eat a large chunk of meat that had been compressed together. This was a meal for a downsing people, but these competitors have to eat it all by themselves, and they had to eat it in the fastest time possible. With the judge's command, the big appetite contestants immediately went into action. They became ruthless eating machines. Annie is still in the audience supporting Balatoni, but this time, the food was too dry. Balatoni choked on the food in his mouth. The spoon was in his mouth, and he couldn't get it out. Balatoni couldn't breathe, and then damn, he fell to the ground with a hard thud. Balatoni just missed out on the championship, but he was blessed. Balatoni woke up to find Annie looking after him. He's lost his career, but he's gained his love. The two of them got married right away. Their married life was very sweet. Balatoni and Annie spent time together as a sweet couple and traveled extensively. Then they had a baby. Annie was pregnant, but in order to be able to continue to participate in the king of appetite competition to earn money. They bribed the doctor to write a fake medical exam. Today's competition requires the two of them to eat 100 pounds of caviar in 20 minutes so that they can get a lot of money from these rich people. Annie hadn't eaten long before he looked uncomfortable. She was not feeling very well, but she still insisted on finishing the caviar in order to make money. If she was just eating alone, that would be fine. But now she had a baby in her belly, so her body couldn't hold out. Annie collapsed on the table the irresponsible way they did it caused Annie to go into premature labor, resulting in the birth of a skinny boy. Annie blamed herself. Balatoni reassured her that it was okay. They could both fatten up the baby later. As time went by, the skinny little boy, Mike, grew up because he was born weak. He didn't have the talent to be a big eater. Mike is now a human sculptor. He is a typical artist and opened a store selling taxidermy animals. In addition to his daily work, he also takes care of his father. Balatoni. Balatoni is a retired big ear star. Annie has passed away. Now they live together as father and son. Balatoni's long years of eating have resulted in him becoming a mountain of weight. Balatoni can't take care of himself at all. He can only sit in one place every day and watch videos of his former big gulps competitions and live in the glory of his past. Even though his son came to take care of him every day, he still despises his son's thinness because Mike couldn't follow in his footsteps and become the king of appetite. So he also often scorned Mike in no uncertain terms. And now the big appetite champion is no longer the object of praise. Mike also despises such a father. It is obvious that his father depends on him for everything to continue his life. But his father always had to verbally attack him and torment his fragile mind. Because his son didn't have the talent of a big appetite, Balatoni had a few cats. He pinned his hopes of becoming the king of appetite on the cats. Other cats he kept food every day. Balatoni's cats ate 30 pounds of light cream a day. So all of his cats are surprisingly fed. If there's a big appetite contest for animals in the future, he and his cats will be on TV together and get back to the top of his life. So Mike buys 30 kilograms of light cream and 800 bars of chocolate every day. 
Mike fell in love with a girl at the supermarket checkout. In addition to the daily must-buy items, Mike would also buy a lollipop and give it to this girl. But he was too skinny and not good looking to get the girl's attention. Mike fell lost and went to the gym to work out like crazy. He longed to be the way the girl liked him. That day he came back to his father's place. Once again, Balatoni makes insulting remarks to him. His father's scolding and the girl's rejection really made him unable to stand this life anymore. He fought directly with his father. He threw chocolates at him. Balatoni was angry and tried to slap his son. But the irony is, he was so fat that he couldn't touch his son no matter how much he moved. He could only wave his fat hands in the air. Mike was so angry that he slammed the door and left and said he would never come back. That day Mike went to the supermarket again to buy something. But he was disappointed to find that the cashier was a boy. He had one less thing to look forward to in his life. He then thought of his father, so Mike went to his father's house again. He was horrified by the scene before him. His father's stomach had been gnawed out. His guts had been ripped out. The blood was spreading all the way to the cattery. Mike forgot to close the door to the cattery when he left last time. The cat ate his father in a feat of hunger. Now the last ties in his life are gone. Mike as a sculptor used his skills to stuff his father's belly and made a taxidermy specimen. Then Mike used an apparatus to make a perfect human statue of himself. One of Mike's customers came to his house to pick up something and found them in the room. Then the customer donated both specimens to the museum and made them available for public viewing. This scene speaks of a man who seeks immortality. This father and son have become immortal in the world.